If you're a creator and you're ready to take your content game to the next level, you need these mobile apps right now. No gatekeeping. I'm spilling all the tea on all the apps that I'm using to supercharge my creative process. Buckle up because I'm sharing with you my must-have apps as a content creator and they are all free and can be used on your phone. Hi darlings, it's Danielle here with another video. If you're already here with me, thank you so much for subscribing. And if you're new here, you're welcome to join the family. Kindly like and subscribe for more content like this. Over here on this channel, we talk about fashion, lifestyle, content creation, and everything in between. So if that is your vibe, then subscribe. I believe you don't need so many apps when you have the ones that can do the job. And if you're looking for the apps that get the job done, then this video is for you. First app that I'm going to talk about is CapCut. CapCut is a lifesaver. I literally use it to edit all my videos. Previously, I used to use more of InShot, but CapCut, oof. CapCut is for more advanced edits, has more effects, has more filters, interesting stuff that you can add to your videos to make it look much more engaging. So CapCut is my go-to editing app. It's free to use. You can use it on your phone. It's very easy to navigate. If you've used a lot of editing apps, it's not difficult to use CapCut too as well. And one thing is that if you want more things, obviously, to every app that has a premium version or a paid version, if you want more features, you need to subscribe to the app. I love CapCut so much that I'm currently subscribed to CapCut so I can do more with the app. But then with the basic features, you can do so much more too as well. Obviously, if you want more to it, you can pay for it as well. CapCut is that girl. Next app that I totally adore for photos and even a little bit of video editing is Lightroom. I use Lightroom to edit all my pictures. Every photo that you've seen on my page is from Lightroom. Lightroom is perfect for editing photos, for tweaking some parts in your photos. Obviously, it is free, but if you want more features, you need to subscribe to it. For photo editing, I'm subscribed to Lightroom, so it gives me much more access on ways I can tweak and then edit my photos. It's great for switching up the lighting in your photos when you want to enhance your subject. The masking tool is my favorite because you can actually focus on your subject and then be able to add some interesting edits to it. I use a lot of the basic features for a long time before I subscribe to Lightroom. If you are looking for an app that does really good edits, Lightroom is that girl. If you want a tutorial on how to edit in Lightroom, I already have a video on this channel taking you through how I edit my photos in Lightroom as well. And if you want my Lightroom presets, they are going to be linked in the description box below. One thing about Lightroom is that you are able to edit specific parts of your photo. If you want some particular colors to pop or if you want some things to look a certain way you have the privilege of speaking those things in your photo understand how the lighting saturation the luminance hues work out you would totally love how lightroom works and it's basically you playing around to find out which edits really suit the photo that you have so that is one app that i totally recommend 10 out of 10 Next app that I love is Notion. Now this is my organization app. This is the app that keeps me focused. This is the app that keeps me on track with the things that I have to do. If you have scattered thoughts if you want to plan more and be much more organized, much more productive, the Notion is the girl for you. It keeps my content ideas, my content schedules, my content list, my goals, plans that I have, my weekly planners as a creator, all of those things. I keep all of them in Notion and it's like a centralized hub of productivity. If you want ways to use Notion, there are tons of videos on YouTube that can help you navigate Notion. Next app that I use is Calendly. Now this is for my clients. As a creator, there would be calls that people would want to have with you. You need to schedule these calls and allocate specific time slots for these calls. Now Calendly is what I use for that. This is how I streamline my communication with my clients and other people that I need to service. It really helps with scheduling your calls and it eliminates the back and forth between you and the client, trying to find out which time is better for you and all of that. It just does away with all of that. 
all you have to do is to set up your calendly set in the time slots that you are available in the week you can even override some days so that means you can set as unavailable for that day and you don't show up so that people know that on this particular day they are not going to get you so whenever you send that link over to someone to book all they have to do is to see the dates that you are available and then they can book on that day when it's convenient for them to and that is what i use for my one-on-one -on -one calls whenever someone buys my one-on-one -on -one calls as a creator or when i have a one-on-one -on -one call with my social media management clients i always send them my calendly link to pick a date that will be suitable for me and also for them because i'm sharing with them my schedule and then they too can look through my schedule and see a day which is convenient for both of us one thing i do is schedule the calls with calendly and be able to allocate specific time slots for my clients but then with zoom this is where i actually have the calls with them and there's a zoom integration in calendly so basically when they book the call i get an automatic registration of that time slot in my zoom as well so it sets up the call so i don't need to go back and forth as soon as you book the call with calendly i automatically get a zoom meeting set up in my zoom too as well so they go hand in hand and i've even subscribed to zoom because i sometimes have calls where i have to record the calls like especially my one-on-one -on -one calls i record the calls and then send the content recordings to the client so they can re-listen and then go over the strategies that we talked about during the call next app that i also use very much as a creator is the google calendar app now this helps me keep all the things that i have to do all the specific dates and things events that are going to happen on top of my Isa calendar app so it helps me put in time slots dates for events that are going to be happening and it sends me reminders so i can prepare for those events too as well and there's an integration from calendly to to google calendar so whenever i have calls meetings that kind of thing it automatically adds it to my google calendar and even if i'm not going to be having the call on zoom it adds it to my google meet too as well so Google Calendar is also a must have. The next app that I also use, which most people do not talk about, is the Forms app. Now, this is the app that I use to create questionnaires, a review form, that kind of thing, to gather information about my clients. It gives me information about the client that I'm about to work with or the client that I'm about to have a call with before we even get on the call. And it's also very helpful when I want to get reviews on lessons that I've had from with my online students. There's a review form in my forms app where I send the link and then you're able to also give me feedback on how the course went for you so that I can use it to improve the lessons that I have on there too as well. And this also helps me to get reviews that I can later on frame and then have something to show for what people have to see concerning my online courses app that i've seen me the stress of trying to send long files to clients for reviews especially when i offer done for you services like video editing is we transfer we transfer is what i used to send files very fast and easy because i edit videos for my clients and i also create content for clients brands you need to send over this kind of content for them to review it give you some feedback and the app that I used to do it is WeTransfer, especially if these videos are very long. All you need to do is to just paste it into WeTransfer or upload it into WeTransfer. They are going to give you a link and then you can copy that link and send it as an email to any client or to anyone and they can view that video on their end or view that file from their end. You can send audios, you can send videos, you can send photos. It's very, very efficient. It's very fast, secure. The best part about WeTransfer is that it keeps the resolution of your photos and videos intact. It keeps the files high quality. You know when you use other apps to send videos or photos and then it gets to the person and it's looking all blurry and shit? WeTransfer doesn't do that. WeTransfer keeps it high quality. The same quality in which you shot it is what the person who is going to be downloading it is going to get it. So if you're a creator and you want to keep that high quality file, 
and send it to your clients, send it to brands for review, then make sure you are using WeTransfer because it's going to keep the quality the way it is and it's very, very fast. Make sure you have good internet connection and you are good to go. Next app that I use currently, and I'm pretty sure it's given in the old video that I posted on the apps that you need to get, is Preview. Now, if you're not much of an aesthetic person, then this isn't for you. But if you're someone that still needs to keep your Instagram feed looking good and like to have an idea of how your feed is going to look like, then Preview is the app for you. I basically use Preview to arrange my feed to see how the posts that I'm going to be making are looking like. I don't obsess over my feed, but then I like things looking a certain way so that I keep up with the brand aesthetic that I have. And also for my clients, I use that to sort of arrange the feed so that things stay cohesive which is very important and gives a good brand impression now mind you aesthetics is a plus it's not a must so it's just a plus for you and your content next app which i don't use always but then i run to when i am struggling to do stuff is snapseed and that is for photo editing you guys know lightroom is my number one b I literally use Lightroom to retouch my photos. One app that really does this well is Snapseed. Now, a couple of you might think the app Retouch is over there, but then I feel like I already have Lightroom for retouching. And since I've subscribed to Lightroom, I deleted Retouch. So I only keep Lightroom and keep Snapseed because Snapseed helps with doing stuff like expanding your photos and then adding more to it when you want the photo frame to look much more bigger. It also helps with removing things that you don't want in your photos like during that step and sometimes i do have some difficulties so i take it to snapseed to go and then polish it up a little bit so snapseed is also one photo editing app that really helps out when you are trying to edit some parts of your photo next app is telegram a couple of you might be using telegram for just sending messages to and fro but then i use telegram for a whole different purpose Telegram is where I have my online courses recorded and kept so people can keep on streaming them for as long as they want. So when you get any of my online courses, all you have to do is to get on the Telegram channel. You get a private link to be added to the channel and then you can access these recordings anytime you want. If you create online courses or digital products or that kind of thing, if you want an alternative to apps like Kajabi, Teachable and all of these, online course hosting platforms and you do not want to subscribe to it an alternative is telegram helps keep your content on the platform and the best part about it is that when i create a channel and then upload my courses i can restrict access to saving content so that means i keep my content safe and secure you cannot screen record it too as well and you cannot download it but as long as you are on the platform and you are in the channel you can always stream it and watch it as many times as you want. Now, all the students in my courses have lifetime access. So anytime you get on Telegram, you can just load these videos and watch them at your own pace, in your own time, whenever you want. So I don't use Telegram for just sending messages, no. I use it to connect with my online course subscribers and then i use it to share lessons with them too as well because that is where i can chat with them i can also get feedback from them that is where i can also give them periodic updates to my online courses next app that i use and this is for graphic design and to create some of my digital products is canva especially when i'm creating guides ebooks and all of that I create this in canva and then i save them and send them as pdfs to my clients when I have a call with you and I want to send you like a PDF going over the call or you ask for a page audit or you ask for a guide, I got that all the information and then I save it as a PDF and send it to you. So I use it to also compile resources for my clients and then I also use it to create engaging graphics for my social media channels i use it mostly for my thumbnails because if i have to do extremely engaging graphics i would use photoshop and that is not on the phone that is on my pc so on my phone i resort to canva next app that i use for graphic design but more of ai graphic design is microsoft designer now i know canva does have some 
AI inbuilt in there. But then when I want to do more of AI stuff, I do it in Microsoft Designer because it has a DALI E integration and makes it much more easier for you to generate images and text and then make them into graphics for your content. So you should check out Microsoft Designer. I was one of the creators that was selected to test out the Microsoft Designer app before it got launched. So it's finally up and you can create AI generated images, AI graphic designs and make your content really pop. Now the user interface of both apps are very friendly and they are easy to navigate. So if you are just someone that doesn't know anything, if you're not a techie person, you can go through it and you wouldn't have any problem at all. Next app that I use, which is for both photos and videos, is Photo Retouch. Now, I use Photo Retouch when I want to create very nice cut out images for my content. So, in my videos, I usually cut out some images when I'm editing and then put them in CapCut. And Photo Retouch is what I use. And what it really does well is if you want a particular part of your content to be selected, it is very specific and very direct. It's going to do the job for you. I use this in brand photos when I want to create like a cutout image when I'm editing photos. And I also use it for video editing too as well. So the next step that I also use that helps me generate ideas as a creator, aside looking at my analytics, looking at my audience feedback, trying to look at how my content is performing, doing polls, all of that. Basically doing my own research to find out what kind of content to create. Aside all of these things, the app that I use is ChatGPT. And the best part about ChatGPT is that when you are able to give it very good prompts, it's going to give you very good responses that you can get a lot of research out from and then be able to create content out of it. Would you believe it if I told you that I had this video script down, but what I did was copy and paste it into ChatGPT and tell it to refine it for me? Yeah, right there. So the best part is, so what you need to do is you need to have baseline of what you want to do if you really want the best out of ChatGPT, then tell it to make it better so you can add in a prompt to make it better for you i know a couple of you might just go on ChatGPT and then just ask anything but then it works way 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 better when you have a little bit of idea as to what you wanted to do give it a prompt and then it's going to even give you much more information if you don't have these apps on your phone, you are missing out big time. If, if you want, you can delete all the content creation apps that you know of and then keep these ones. Trust me, they won't fail you. Yeah, you come and tell me. You don't really need to do that. If you want to know about the apps that I used for my content previously or I might go to sometimes, then you can check the old video that I made for apps that are also very good as well. Now, this is an updated version, so this is obviously what I'm currently using the most. And these apps I have in rotation, so you can check that out too. So get on these apps, download them, and thank me later. I hope you've learned a thing or two and you found out apps that would help you take your content game to the next level. Let me know if you have any questions below. Let me know what other apps that you also use to make better content. And mind you, there are a lot of apps that are around that I know of. Probably if you put something in the comments, I might know of it, but then just that I'm not using it currently in my stage of content creation. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss when I upload. Because every Sunday I come to you with another video. I love you guys. I'm literally on a roll here trying to stay consistent. And you guys have been supporting me, liking and commenting on my videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you got to this point, leave hearts below. I love that you are here, part of this community. And I'm really rooting for you to win. Bye, darlings.